Hey guys, Steph here. So I got an email from somebody who is a highly experienced C++ developer working in corporate and he wants to get into freelance because he doesn't want to work in the corporate environment anymore due to stress. So I'm going to read his email and I'm going to uh, provide a pathway for people who want to go from being a developer in a corporate environment and move into uh, freelancing. So he says, I worked in my past life as a C, C++ programmer on embedded platforms. I'm a good programmer. I use mostly VI and Notepad++ edits as editors, so he's really old school. And generally, you can use C type compilers. Did some Python, have a CS degree from way back. So he's, uh, he's got all the credentials as a developer, no question about that. I want to take away the stress from working in corporate and also in a lab. Actually, I haven't worked in a year. I'm thinking that freelancing and especially remote work would be a little better for me at this stage, such as working from within an RV while traveling around. That sounds like a good gig, right? I'm old at 65, still need to work. Can you recommend a path? Web development, I guess. I have no problem paying for coaching. Thanks. All right, so I'm not going to, for sake of his anonymity, I'm not going to mention his name, but um, we'll call him Stephen. So Stephen, uh, I'm not going to charge you for consulting because at uh, 65, if you still need to work, I don't want to take away any cash from you. But we're going to see if we can answer some questions and get you going in the right direction here. So number one is that this is all stress related. So he has the job, but he just couldn't take the corporate environment. Believe me, I can relate as many other people. Well, I never worked for a corporate job, except when I did a gig uh, way back in the day for about two, three weeks, whatever it was. So I got a feel for it and also talking to lots of friends. So working in a corporate environment is very different from freelancing, very different. You're tr trading in terms of stress, with corporate life, you have this, this, low, this low volume but consistent stress that you may experience, depending on the place of work that you happen to be in. So that's my first question. Can you perhaps, have you tried looking for other corporate gigs or lab gigs where the stress is low? It could be that the stress is high just because of the particular environment you are at. Just a suggestion, since you have a lot of corporate experience. So that's number one. But of course, I understand there's this low grade, consistent stress as uh, in the corporate world for a lot of people, not for everybody, depending on where you work. Whereas as freelance, uh, the stress is much, much, much less. And it's much, it's much more infrequent because especially once you establish yourself and you have a lot of opportunity and a lot of clients, then if a client gives you any BS, you just fire them. And if you set up your freelance business properly, you have an array of clients. You want to, you know, five to 10 or more. And this way, if you lose one, it's not a big deal. So if you have a stressful client, you just give them the boot, boop, and you're done. So that eliminates a lot of stress. So if you want to get into freelance, uh, first question you have to ask yourself, do you feel comfortable going out there and speaking with people trying to set up deals, trying to uh, get those initial contacts. You may have a lot of contacts in industry or with friends who may be starting little businesses or whatnot. So there's a lot of opportunity for you there. So another, so first thing you can look at is contract work. Since you have a lot of uh, experience uh, as a developer, maybe you could find little, little jobs here and there where you do three months uh, writing some uh, code for a particular company at a premium rate, right? When you work short term on a contract, so you're basically a temporary employee, first of all, you get much more money for your time since you're temporary. Number two, you have a lot more control and flexibility because you are temporary, they don't really have the hammer over you. You know, you have a lot more control and they tend to speak, they tend to treat their contractors uh, more carefully because or with more respect I think not because they know that you're temporary so they know they don't have uh, too much leverage over you so contract work within the type of programming that you've done embedded systems and stuff th there might be some possibilities where they need to 
just do something for three months. So you might want to beef up your LinkedIn profile in that regard, maybe a website, get a website up and running to profile yourself. But LinkedIn, start talking to people, that might be a route to go. So when it comes to freelance, you have to be comfortable reaching out, talking to people, being able to negotiate contracts, that sort of thing. It's not super complex. I have a course, you can get it for like 30 bucks. It walks you through the process, how to set up contracts, how to track your time, how to bid on contracts, how to manage your clients successfully. Uh, in terms of freelancing, the number one thing that makes people successful as freelancers is their ability to manage clients and the client expectations in terms of the relationships between you and the client and what you're going to actually deliver. It can get bad if there's a if, if there's a misconception about the expectation about how and what you're going to do, to deliver to the client. So it's very important that right from the start that you uh, that's clear for everybody how the relationship is going to be um, conducted between you and your client. So uh, yeah, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you have that ability to go reach out, find clients? In freelancing, the first part of it, getting up and running is the hardest part for most people. Some people get tons of clients right away, depending on who you know and so forth. For most people, it's a little laggy at first, so you have to have the financial and the uh, psychological wherewithal to be able to deal with that. Now at 65, uh, I'm hoping that you have a bunch of savings, um, So, which will bring me to my next point. One of the things I keep stressing for people on this channel, my other channel, which is more uh, business and entrepreneur oriented, is that you have to have financial discipline and financial awareness. It's so crucial to your stress levels. It's so crucial to uh, your quality of life. So that doesn't mean you need to have to save huge amounts of money. It just means you have to have your spending under control, be on the right trajectory so you're saving every month and you have no debt or you're getting rid of your debt. So it has to do with discipline, tracking, budgeting. Trust me, once you get on the path, once you have clarity, once you understand where you have to be in terms of how much you earn and how much you save and how much you invest, life is so much easier, right? Even though you're not there yet, you may not be there yet in terms of your actual finances, the fact you're making progress, you feel so much better. It becomes a much stressful life. Very important. The next question I have for you is how much savings do you have? How much retirement savings do you have, which is invested in the broader market? And two, how much emergency money you have? I assume since you haven't worked for a year, you have emergency money. I'm hoping you're not burning through too much of your money. At 65, I guess in the US, uh, Medicare Medicaid is free, or well, 85%. So I guess that you're past that hurdle. I'm from Canada, so uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works particularly, but that's what I understand. I'm going to go on a tangent here. It's going to probably surprise you. You have to ask yourself about your health. How healthy are you? What's your body fat percentage? Like, do you have a gut? Uh, do you have, like, uh, man boobs? You know? Can you still do a push-up? This is very important because your energy levels are going to be greatly impacted by your health. Uh, your cognitive capability will be greatly impacted by your physical health. And you need energy, and you need cognitive capabilities, and you need a relatively pain-free existence to be able to earn a lot of money, right? So you should, if you haven't already, start getting into shape. Cut down the carbs and the crappy food. Start eating natural food, uh, meat, vegetables, Meat is actually very good for you, believe it or not. And drink lots of water, no more fruit juices, no more pancakes, no more uh, breads, or at least cut it down in half. Eggs are very healthy for you. Butter is very healthy for you. Start uh, transforming your diet, if you're not already there, into a very healthy diet. What you will see when you do that, cut your carbs by at least 50%, you're gonna start feeling much more energy. You're gonna start feeling much more mental clarity. Aches and pains will begin to disappear. They'll, they'll blow away like a breeze. And with that extra energy, that uh, reduced uh, anxiety and pressure on your body, that will lower your stress levels overall. Even actually eating less processed foods 
will re reduce your stress overall. So you want to take care of that. Also exercise. Are you walking at least five, ten thousand steps a day? Can you do some push-ups? You should do maybe weights once, twice a week. Uh, you know, get in shape. Telling you, telling you, it's going to have a huge impact in terms of quality of life. So when it comes to the specifics, when it comes to the uh, coding itself, yes, it's all about the web when freelance, most of it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of web design, web development, a lot of WordPress, a lot of Joomla. So you want to get into the web, learn the foundations of the web. I do have a course, you want to do that for 30 bucks, 39 bucks. And uh, you'll get through it very quickly since you have a good background. And then you learn some WordPress and off to races. You go watch a bunch of videos I've done before on how to become a successful freelancer, how to start freelancing. It's all in there. So yes, you want to get into the web. You want to start with your HTML5, your CSS3, learn a little bit of JavaScript, learn a little PHP. Since you have a C, C++, background with embedded systems. I think the hardest part about it for you is going to be understanding the request response model, the layered aspect, if you will, the layered nature, there you go, of web design development. The fact of the matter is most freelance gigs work is going to be for small business, meaning small, simple projects, and they can be very profitable. You might even find yourself using no code and low code platforms. Don't forget to look at AI like ChatGPT or Grok for code, etc. There's others. And get a good code editor. You got you to get off of VI. You want to get into a good code editor. So I like uh, JetBrains has good ones that are inexpensive. Uh, there's also uh, VS Code. Depends on what you want. Uh, yeah, you want to get into a modern code editor. It makes you much, much more productive, especially when you get into the, the web in that whole area. So yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's what you want to do. So start learning the web stuff, as I mentioned just now. Look at your diet, look at your nutrition, get off, take off your, your shirt and look in front of the mirror in your underwear. And you can see if you got flab, you want to start cleaning up your diet, drinking a lot more water. Are you drinking enough water per day, depending on your height? I know this seems weird for a technical or a coding or a software development based channel, but I'm telling you, I'm not 65, but I'm, I'm getting there, and I have to say that um, when I eat better and I, 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 I drink lots of water and I exercise, it has a huge impact in terms of uh, all the things I talked about before. So get that in order. Start tracking your expenses. Uh, start looking, pay attention to uh, your money and how you're investing it and saving it. Uh, and your debt and become religious about that become make it a game make it like a strategy game to organize your finances trust me again understand once you got it sort of handled and you got to handle over what your money's doing so there's uh, there's total clarity there everything becomes much more it's much simplified everything becomes much easier you just be able to it's almost like you're coasting into it it's like you're just ah this is cool and it will make your life a lot easier. It's going to reduce stress. Again, I think the emphasis here to remind the audience, you left a job because of stress. So we need to implement protocols and habits that will reduce stress. So getting your finances under order, getting your body fat percentage lower, walking every day, doing some weights, uh, eating healthy foods, these, will, these are all big stress reducers. It's going to have a huge impact. In terms of health, I'll leave you with this. It's not so much about a special supplement or a special pill. No, no, no. What you don't consume, the crappy food, the seed oils, is far more important than uh, some special pill. A supplement can help, but really by cutting out the crappy food and replacing it with natural food, it will give you the energy and the health to be able to pursue uh, your new career as a freelancer or as an independent contractor. And there's no reason why you can't over the next three to four years uh, get yourself in fantastic uh, shape financially, mentally, and physically. Um, you can be vital into your 80s. I've seen it to an old martial artists I know. So uh, there you go, I hope this helps. I get a lot of people are asking me to do just a career consult, a business consult, 
I have my full boot camps, which are gonna set curriculums, instructors, and consults, but some people just wanna do a quick consult with me. So I'm gonna have a link below starting in this video where you can click through, consult with me, the price will be there. And uh, oftentimes for most people, just one 15 minute call with me, I can answer just about everybody's questions with regards to any of the subjects that I cover here. And by the way, everything that I talk about is based on personal experience, not me researching, regurgitating other people's ideas. I, I do, of course, I've done a lot of reading and learning over the years, but everything is tested. So I don't talk about things that um, I'm not well versed in. So for example, I've been doing camera stuff for years now, but only in the last couple of years, maybe three years or so, I've been comfortable actually teaching people about how to use cameras and shoot video and audio. As you can see, I know what I'm doing now. But it took me years because I was dumb. I was not smart enough to hire somebody who was a pro who could have saved me a lot of years. I kind of did it, to, it was a hobby, so I did it on the side, and I learned this. I took courses, did courses, I did consult with people on occasion, but if I would have hired somebody for, you know, a good experienced videographer or something, I could have learned this craft instead of over many years, I could have learned a lot more in just, uh, you know, a few months. Anyway, that's it, I'm Michael Stepp. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this video, feel free to uh, post them below. And if you want a private consult with me, you can check out the links below. And if you want to join one of my mentoring programs, uh, well, one is available now, the coding one for total beginners. Uh, it's super, it's a great price. I'm able to do it because of my teaching platform that I developed for the schools. So I'm able to deliver a super high level of education uh, where I have to put in much less time than the typical boot camp, so I can offer instead of paying ten, fifteen thousand, I'm able to offer for a fraction of the price, and you get, I think, even better outcomes. Mm -hmm.